So any Little Mermaid fans in the house? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anybody upset that Little Mermaid is going to be brown this time around? Yeah. Nobody's upset. If you're upset, I have a song for you. I'm going to do a little, a little ditty. Um, I just think, well, I can't sing well, but I think I'm, I'm witty. I'm a little clever. <laughs> Look at Tiana, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think our inclusion's complete? Wouldn't you think that our race has everything? Look at this trove, stories untold. How many triumphs can one people hold? After Obama, sure, we had everything. We had singers and dancers aplenty, athletes and actors galore. You want TV shows? Eh, not too many. But who cares? No big deal. We want more. We want to see what white people see. We want to see some representation. Walking around on, what's that called again? The silver screen. Being oppressed, you don't get too far. Privilege is required for fantasy characters Strolling around in space or swimming in the sea Up where they walk, up where they run Up where they tan all day in the sun Trying to be while excluding me Like a brown girl, what would they give? If they could live without black people, what would they pay to have their say at Disneyland? Not a racist bone, so they understand that their talentless daughters and GOP women aren't the only women the world wants to see. PLCs know what everyone knows. It's important to see your own reflections. We've withstood your fires and we didn't burn. Now it's our turn. We're gonna love, love to see our daughters adore a fantasy. Because we will be part of that world. Every your hand up through the crow. That's it. So that was just a little song. Thank you. But I will do no more songs and no more political. Um, just because I had tequila. Um, whiskey is for politics. Tequila is for sexy times. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're going to do some sexy times tonight. Um, my book, however, Fist and Fire, the first part of it is fairly, pretty much all is... Um, social commentary uh, about the past three years and kind of the state of our world um, and talking honestly about it. Um, and then the next part, um, the fire part, is about a relationship. So I'm going to do some pieces from that. Um, and I appreciate you guys listening and I thank you so much for coming out. Uh, did we talk about how we know each other? Yes, I know. No, but I mean, I, like, I didn't know if you wanted to talk oh. about it. Oh! Oh my, so, so random, this is like such a random connection. Elizabeth and I worked in American Girl together like over a decade ago. Yes, we sold, we sold expensive dolls marked up 90% from their Chinese rate um, to girls all over the world. Yeah, if anybody's ever watched um, Annie, it was the, the scene where she sings a song about little girls. That, I think that's how we all felt late at night um, yeah very Carol Burnett so that's how we know each other and I don't think at the time we realized either one of us did poetry but you, you found out and I found out at yeah. some point you found out yeah, yeah but it, it, it wasn't immediate it wasn't in the middle of the doll selling I don't think no <laughs> past that so a good decade plus maybe 13 years 13 14 years after here we are Still doing other things, but still finding ways to be artsy-fartsy and crunchy granola. 
because it's it's good to do. Um, so oh, we'll start with morning quickie because who doesn't like it? anybody like a morning quickie? Yeah. Who likes morning sex? Yeah. I like morning sex. The guys at the end of the bar they don't like morning sex. I don't think they're getting any. Kind of dry, sad. Maybe coffee. Um, you have morning sex, sir? Is it your favorite? That's right. All right. So this piece is called Morning Quickie. Back arches, legs tremble, breath soft, sigh. Fingers reaching, bottom lip bitten, eyes rolling back, slow, hips roll, nipples harden, mouth opens, tongue moistens, delirious delight. That's it, because then you have to go to work, so. Get you move on. Get it going quick. Uh, let us see. Oh, this is a sweet little one, sweet little ditty. Fall into me. Be engulfed, sink into sweet folds of flesh, be entwined legs and arms, tendu. Tendon and sinew be exalted, sacred moans, hymns of pleasure, tongues that speak silently, worship whispered in your ear. Let me kneel before you in reverence, my only prayer to release you. Drench me, baptize me, let me be born anew, wet with your satisfaction, fall into me. And that was, of course, about the Catholic Church. <laughs> it's not blasphemy. Blasphemy. Uh, oh, Here's, this is some sassy ones. This is after the good sex is over and you're just pissed off and you just broke up. This one is called Girdles. Loving you is like wearing a stretched out girdle. I put you on, but I barely feel you there. You are supposed to help me hold in all of life's roles. Instead, you just roll down, and I need to take you off. Yeah, yeah, discard him like old Spanx. Just discard it. Um, this is when they've moved on, and, and you see them out with someone new. Give her my number. I have tattooed myself into your spirit, Etched myself into your soul, echoes of my moans will be forever in your ears. I'm always in your hair. You will hear my laughter in every song, taste my lips every time you eat. I am so entwined into your DNA that if she wants to learn you, she will have to know me first. I know, that was saucy, wasn't it? That was saucy. That was saucy. Good whistle it makes me tingle. It makes me tingle. Let's see. Hmm. Just. Oh, this is a good breakup poem. It's kind of sad. Who said it? Anybody's had a sad breakup? Or is everybody in wonderful relationships that are non toxic and loving? Absolutely just hold on to you and, and keep you going well. In, in the middle, in the middle, you're a little gray. Yeah, I'm hot or cold. Either it's really great or it's shitty, but I don't have any, there's no, there's no happy, lukewarm relationship for me. So, this is called 13. Gonna take all the poems I wrote you, the ones you read and the ones you will never read, the ones I cried on, the ones jealousy fed to fires, the ones I scream in, the ones I hate you in, the ones with blood for ink seeped in pages of pain and gratitude and joy. Memories I wish weren't in the past. The ones full of foolish faith, all consuming hope. The love poems, all the fucking love poems and tear them up, toss them in the air like glitter, swallow and shoot them out of my ass like lactose intolerant gas. I am allergic to being loved and left, having to act like an adult like a well-behaved and adult when I want to cut you and watch you gasp for breath like I do at night when the pain of missing you wraps around my body like a cop's chokehold around a black man's neck. I want your all or nothing. 
Friendship is a watered down insult to our passion. I don't water down my tequila. I don't water down my life. I am not a cheap shot. I'm a field of agave. I am petty, queen of grudges. I wish you pain, useless pain that you gave to yourself in the name of love and honor and integrity and self-preservation and the useless chivalry of protecting me from you. Ashes to ashes and dust to weak dicks. <laughs> and that is that piece. So how's everybody doing? Everybody's okay tonight? Why am I? Why am I giving you what? It's not a conversation that's happening up here. Okay, just checking. Um, how many more, Elizabeth? Two more? As many as I want to do. Maybe I will go political just because I'm bitching. This one is called Backpacks. Anybody have sons? Any, any mamas or boys? Okay, just us two. Anybody got nephews, cousins? Yeah. Okay, there we go, there we go. We'll make that work. When black boys are born, we mothers kiss their faces and twirl our fingers in their curls and put them in carriers on our chests and show them to the world our tiny black princes. And when they start school as early as three, we mothers place huge backpacks on their backs and we slowly fill them with bricks, etched with tools and tattooed with truths, hoping to save them. Don't talk back, don't get angry, say no sir, say yes ma'am, don't fight, even if they hit you first, especially if they are white. Do your best, better than best, be still, work hardest, brick. They get a little older and we add more. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Don't look them in the eye, don't challenge. Don't put your manhood before your life. Just get home safe. Don't walk alone, don't walk with too many boys. Don't walk towards police, don't walk away from police. Don't buy candy or iced tea. Don't put your hood up. I'll drive you home, I'll pick you up. You can't be free, don't go wandering. Come home to me, brick. They get a little older and we add more. Understand you are a threat. Standing still, breathing. Your degrees are not a shield. Your job is not a shield. Your salary makes you a target. Your car makes you a target. Your nice house in a nice neighborhood makes you a target. Don't put your ego before your safety. Don't talk back. Don't look them in the eye. Get home to your wife, your son, brick. They weigh them down, this knowing of having to carry the load of their blackness. The world hasn't changed. The straps just dig deeper into their skin and their backs ache, but their souls don't break our beautiful black men. And so when you say to me, all lives matter, I will simply ask, will your son die with the world on his back? Mine will. And that is that piece. I'm gonna read one more, and let's see. Here we go. This piece is called Uncle Joe. It's for my uncle who passed away ooh, some almost 30 years ago. I had an Uncle Joe who, by all accounts, was gentle and kind and funny. All I have from him are blurry memories that were mostly gifts from others' minds. I had an Uncle Joe who worked at a general store as a teen and told the white owner to kiss his ass after she called him a nigger. I had an Uncle Joe whose mouth made the Klan come for his family, and so they left Mississippi in the middle of the night in a Model T Ford headed back to New Orleans with Uncle Joe alive. I had an Uncle Joe who distanced himself from his family, separated to spare us the shame of him, the shame of a Catholic, black, gay man. He took his life after decades-long isolation, and isolation to save his family, the shame of watching him die. 
My father, who I have never thought of as a liberal or progressive, he was a cop, but he would decimate you if you used the F word, would explain to you the difference between choice and birth, a gay rights activist without trying, without going to a march, just by loving his brother, missing his brother, his only brother. When we talk of his brother, he says, hate kill Joe, hate and ignorance. He laments the years of separation, remembers the years when the world was colder, hates the empty space, his only brother left in his heart, an Uncle Joe sized space, a space where love removed itself from love to spare love the humiliation, to spare love for being ostracized, to spare love the pain of the world's judgment. I cannot imagine the loneliness of a Southern Catholic gay black man in 1960, how he must have looked for safety from his skin, from his heart, from his family, because Catholic gods don't mix with homosexuality unless it's behind closed doors, locked in Vatican vaults. Jim Crow and homophobia strolls American streets back then, hand in hand, skipping on Bible Belt roads, lovers who gave birth to Tea Party, Trump voting, bigoted, xenophobic mobs. Who could they possibly hate more than a gay black man? I had an Uncle Joe, who was my father's only brother, his only brother, his older brother, my grandmother's favorite, the first honorary boy to survive the tragedy of infancy and Southern poverty, which were always a looming death threat. I had an Uncle Joe who by all accounts was kind, funny, laughed loudly, gave generously, and bravely carved out his own truth in the face of a world that told him everything about him was unwanted and unworthy and unloved. I had an Uncle Joe. Thank you guys so much for listening with open hearts and ears. Thank you for having me, Elizabeth. Thank you, thank you, thank you.